Oh boy, it's happened again! The latest Persona polls from Japan have brought out more salty reactions from overseas fans over stuff like the protagonist taking the top spot for the 100th time. But that's not what we're here for today. No, today we're talking about why Yosuke is one of, if not the most popular male party member in Japan, and why, on the other hand, Ryuji and Kanji, who are general favorites among Westerners, hardly get any love in native Atlas polls. Now, before we really get into it, I do want to get the quote, Fujo bait topic out of the way first. This undoubtedly plays a role, but honestly I'm not a fan of how dismissively and even misogynistically this argument is thrown around sometimes. An actual shame given how the Fujoshi subculture is way more complex and even queer inclusive in native Japan than anglophones on the internet make it out to be. I'll get more into this topic in my eventual Yosuke video, but I'm leaving links to more information on the actual nature of the Japanese Fujoshi community if you're curious below. Anyway, Yosuke's popularity goes way beyond just being shipping bait for you, and I'll be presenting two main reasons why these differences in the polls can be mostly attributed to values dissonance between our respective cultures, a topic that just means a lot to me having grown up as fourth generation Japanese American on my dad's side, yet also having had a mom who was born and raised in Japan. In other words, I've been well aware of and have experienced culture clashes since I was very young. And just a disclaimer, I'm not saying Japan is a complete monolith here, nor am I saying one culture is inherently better than another, they're all just different. I'm just hoping this video can help explain why there seems to be this huge discrepancy between general Japanese and Western audience taste. So to start off, being noisy and rowdy in public is a big no in Japan. It doesn't matter if you're being intentionally disruptive or not. Simply speaking loudly with friends is seen as rude and will get you plenty of annoyed stares, since there's supposed to be this understanding that you are sharing these public spaces with other people. You see, Japanese children learn from an early age to always act in the consideration of others around them, in large part due to Japan's collectivist values. In other words, society expects you to be able to quote, read the room or situation, something that I spoke at great length about in my Futaba video. This is doubly important when you're in an enclosed space like the train. The biggest unspoken rule here is that you should never talk on your cell phone, even if it's an important call from your family or your boss. You can commonly observe someone who does receive a call on the train softly answer with something like, Hey, I'm sorry, I'm on the train and we'll call you back later. There's a survey conducted every handful of years by Japan's railway companies on what behaviors passengers find most annoying. And as of 2017, noisy and rompish behavior ranked as number one, which is a repeat of the exact same number one ranked nuisance from 2010's survey. So this is a long time ago at this point, but the way my mom explained it is that since Japanese is such a contextual language, one that requires greater attention to grasp the real meaning of what people often leave unsaid, apparently it's irritating to only hear one side of the conversation when someone's talking on the phone, because then you're unable to deduce how the other person is feeling or expressing themselves. Unlike a conversation you may overhear where everyone is present on the train. That's why it's fine to talk with friends or family who are also on board, but not on the phone. On an interestingly related note, I'd like to bring up two studies, albeit not Japanese ones, from 2010 and 2013 respectively, which found that people are more distracted when overhearing one-sided conversations via calls compared to ones where all parties are present. Apparently, this is due to our mind's tendency to try and fill in the blanks and guess what the unheard voice is saying. But anyway, the main takeaway I'm getting at here is that you should avoid being obnoxious or bothersome to others in Japan. This is why I think the annoyance over Ryuji loudly blurting out that they are phantom thieves has less to do with him blowing their cover 
and more about how he's disrupting the public space around him. On another related note, the showboaty antics of Ryuji don't vibe well with general Japanese values either. Like, even the super westernized 4th and 5th gen Japanese American community I grew up with still put a lot of emphasis on humility and downplaying your individual contributions, all the while propping up those of others. I've seen a not uncommon complaint about how JRPG characters can't seem to take a compliment, but honestly, that's just a very Japanese response. At the very least, you're expected to say, Oh, it really was nothing. I still have a lot to learn. Or, this is just a small thing I could do. Actually, insert whoever else's name here, is really behind all this incredible work. Basically, something along those lines, regardless of how good you actually are or how much work you really put in. In other words, it's essentially taboo for someone in Japan to publicly call themselves the GOAT. With that said, Yosuke is probably the most self-deprecating and or humble character, at least outwardly, of all the male party members. And the key word here is outwardly. He never tries to steal the spotlight for himself like Junpei does, nor is he obsessed with catching the killer for the sake of fame like Ryuji with the Phantom Thieves popularity as P5 goes on. So even though Yosuke's shadow has to do with him thinking he's better than all these hillbillies out in the country, he never outwardly displays this kind of reaction. And going back to the whole reading the room thing, Yosuke is generally the most socially adept and adhering to conventional social interactions, which is my guess as to why Akihiko and Yusuke aren't as popular. But this leads us to the second major factor that pushes Yosuke above the other bro characters, and that's his sense of responsibility to both his family and society. I think the latter can seem exaggerated to Westerners, but there truly is this kind of expectation in collectivist and Confucian-influenced countries. This societal responsibility expects a person to always be aware of what's required of them at any particular point in their life. This value is instilled from a very young age. Like for example, elementary age children as early as 4 or 5 years old are sent out on their own to run simple errands like buying carrots for that night's dinner or something similar. And then during the later school years, like middle and high school, students normally take turns and or rotate cleaning the classroom after school every day, a not uncommon scene found in anime or J-dramas. But beyond things like that, the number one expectation for teenagers is to behave well and succeed in school. Why? To get into the best college possible since the top corporations and other job offers recruit from those top universities in a process nicknamed Shukatsu. I've gone into this in more detail in my Persona 3 and Apathy Syndrome video, but I also plan to revisit this in the eventual Adachi analysis. But as for Yosuke, he may not be a top student like Yukiko, but he generally gives off the impression of being more focused on his studies compared to characters like Junpei, or Ryuji, and Kanji. I can also see Yosuke being the main brains of the party before Naoto joins, contributing to this impression as well. Then, beyond this macro-level responsibility, on the family level, Yosuke being the manager's son at Junez would carry the expectation that he'd fill in and do a lot at the store. Japan's culture of shame means any single individual's actions affect the entire household's reputation. This contributes a ton into why hikikomori are such a difficult issue to address, as I've gone over in the Futaba and P3 videos. Filial piety having had such a deep influence on Japanese culture also plays into the whole a good son adds to his father's reputation kind of mentality, which Yosuke himself fulfills. He does all he can at the store, even going to the lengths of requesting help from Rize for the Junez concert. He also never causes trouble or rocks the boat for his family reputation-wise, unlike Kanji's, albeit vastly misunderstood, 
delinquent tendencies that forced his mom to constantly apologize for his behavior. Actually, in general, Kanji's story and obsession with being macho and tough is not as relatable or as much of a problem for men in Japan as it is for Westerners. Especially Americans judging from all the advertising, marketing, and media portrayals of superheroes and jocks that supposedly depict how the ideal man looks and acts. In contrast, Japan is a collectivist culture where the needs of the group are prioritized over the individual's success, and when adding on the humility stuff mentioned earlier, it results in a demeanor that comes across as rather… soft, for lack of a better word, to foreigners. I've heard from my dad and a few of my guy friends of Japanese ethnicity that they feel kind of at odds pursuing things like promotions in America because the values of our familial upbringing basically contradict advocating for yourself. On a related note, I think it says a lot that numerous executives of Japanese businesses over the past few decades have slashed their own pay for mistakes that should be attributed to management. An action that's basically unheard of in most individualistic Western countries like the US, where CEOs just lay off workers instead. Though don't get me wrong, I'm not saying every Japanese company does this, nor am I defending the actually corrupt ones. Anyway, to start wrapping this up, Yosuke just doesn't really have any particular flaw that would irritate the average Japanese player. Akihiko and Yusuke are rather clueless in many social settings. Meanwhile, Ryuji and Junpei are definitely seen as pretty irresponsible and so on. To be clear, I'm not condoning the actual homophobic things Yosuke did or said, but his overall personality traits seem to hit the sweet spot when it comes to Japanese cultural values. But now I'd like to know which male party member you find the most relatable or is your favorite, and also where you're from if you're comfortable sharing. Otherwise, this was just a short and sweet video compared to my usual persona analyses. Please like and subscribe if you like this, check out my other persona analyses, and follow me on my other socials. Finally, I want to thank all my patrons, especially Big Klingy, Sam Bezjak, Francesco Santoyo Rego, M. Meownalin, Platinum Rose, Malcolm Lowry, Unholy Biscuit, Leviathan8685, Eden Korsef, Pivanic, Peter Shepard, and Andy.